Thank you, I'm Mr. Lehner, and welcome back to Mr. Lehner's Math Extravaganza. In today's webisode, we're going to take a look at fact families involving addition and subtraction. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at a few of these problems, and some actually involve a little bit of algebra on them, too. Let's take a look. It says, find the value for n that makes each number sentence true. Again, remember, any time that we use a letter to stand for a number, we call that a, what do we call it again? Yes, we call that a variable. A variable is a letter that stands for um, a number in an algebra problem. So let's take a look at an example here. If I have a problem, one-third plus two-fourths equals n. I have my two fractions that are added together, and they're going to equal n. Well, I'm trying to find out, well, what does n equal? Okay, to solve this problem, if I have one-third plus two-fourths, we're going to use a little bit of our background knowledge from earlier on adding fractions. Hopefully you remember that when we add fractions, you have to have common denominators. Well, what's the least common denominator between 3 and 4? It's 12. So how did I get from 3 to 12? I had to multiply by 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So 4 times 1 would become 4. So that becomes 4 twelfths. Again, these are equivalent fractions, but now my denominator is uh, 12. On this side, to get from 4 to 12, I multiply it by 3. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6. So 4 twelfths plus 6 twelfths, they have common denominators now. I can add those together. Uh, so 4 plus 6 is going to become 10 twelfths, um, which I can simplify, or I'm finding a, a lower equivalent fraction, which is going to be 5 6. So in my original problem, what does n stand for? 1 3rd plus 2 4th, n is going to stand for 5 6. Now that makes up a, a fact family. Now think back to, oh, I don't know, first grade, when you're working with addition type problems, and you learn about fact families. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. Um, your fact family, you can use those three to create that family of addition and subtraction problems. You can do the same thing with fractions. So 1 third plus 2 fourth is 5 six. 2 fourths plus 1 third is 5 six. 5 six minus 1 third is 2 fourths. And 5 six minus 2 fourths is 1 third. So it's the same type of system that you learned a long time ago, but now we're just throwing some handy dandy little fractions in there. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, ooh, I threw a little curveball again. Throw a subtraction in there. n minus 3 fifths equals 1 fourth. Again, I'm trying to solve for n here, figure out what, this, uh, what that variable is going to equal. Okay, now for me, in this type of problem, I'm going to flip the problem around for myself to make it a little bit um, easier. I know that if I have n minus 3 fifths equals 1 fourth, I know that this has to be the biggest fraction because in a subtraction problem, this is going to be bigger than this and this. So let's flip this problem around. I'm going to make n my uh, solution or my sum here. I'm going to make these two my add-ins uh, or the numbers that we're going to add together. So 1 fourth plus 3 fifths is going to equal n. Same thing, I have to find a common denominator. So the common, least common denominator between 4 and 5 is 20. 4 times 5 is 20. 5 times 1 is 5. Again, these are equivalent fractions, just uh, with different denominators. 3 fifths. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 3 is 12. So now I have 5 twentieths plus 20 twentieths, which is going to equal 17 twentieths. So now I know it's n equals 17 twentieths. Well, how do I know that n equals 17 twentieths? Well, let's, we just talked about fact families. Let's talk about, uh, let's reverse it. 17 twentieths, which is what I think n is, minus 3 fifths, but well, what did I rename 3 fifths as? 12 twentieths. So if I subtract 17 twentieths minus 12 twentieths, that equals 5 twentieths, which is the same as 1 fourth. So I just kind of worked the problem around a little bit differently. Let's take a look at this fact family. I'm going to use these three numbers, um, 17 twentieths, 12 twentieths, and 5 twentieths. Here's n, 17 twentieths minus 12 twentieths is 5 twentieths. 17 twentieths minus 5 twentieths is 12 twentieths. Let's flip it around, let's make n our answer now. 5 twentieths plus 12 twentieths is 17 twentieths, and 12 twentieths plus 5 twentieths 
is 17 twenties. A lot of talking in there. So that's my fact family for addition and subtraction of these three numbers. Um, in my original problem, I wanted to make my life a little bit easier. So instead of making a sub subtraction problem, I made an addition problem and then put my common denominators and added across. It's a handy dandy little strategy in there um, to help you if you'd rather do it um, this way. All right, let's take a look at what you guys are gonna take a look for. You're gonna find the value of the variable y that makes each one of these sentences true. You have one half plus seven tenths plus y equals two. You also have one half plus six tenths equals two minus y. So I've upped the ante a little bit. I've made it a little bit harder for you guys to give you a challenge out there. Grab that pencil, get that paper ready, go ahead and pause this video, and we'll see how you guys do. Okay, let's take a look at our first problem here. Again, I'm trying to solve for y. I wanna know what y equals. I also know that this is an addition problem. So the first thing that I'm going to do here, if I know that these two fractions, um, I have tenths and I have uh, a half on here, I wanna find the least common denominator. Well, the least common denominator is 10. So that's gonna stay the same. I'm gonna multiply by five to get five tenths. So I basically just rename that first fraction. Okay, well if I take 5 tenths plus 7 tenths, that gives me 12 tenths. I now have 12 tenths plus y equals 2. Well, I know that 10 tenths equals a whole. I'm trying to get two wholes, so if 10 tenths equals um, a whole, another 10 tenths would be another whole. Well, how many tenths do I need to add to 12 tenths to make it another whole? Y would become 8 tenths because 12 tenths plus the 8 tenths would give me 20 tenths, which would equal two. So I basically have plugged in um, y. I renamed y, I found out what y was, uh, which was eight tenths. I was gonna add those two together to equal two because 20 tenths equals two. Let's take a look at our second problem. This one was a little bit different. I have a half plus six tenths equals two minus y. Ugh, a little bit different. All right, well, let's break it down. Let's rename this half as five tenths. Well, five tenths, plus 6 tenths is going to equal 11 tenths. So I found this side of my fraction here, or I'm sorry, this, part of, this side of my problem here, which is 11 tenths. I need this side to be equal to 11 tenths too. So if I have 11 tenths and I have 2 on this side, I'm going to work with tenths because that's already the denominator I have here. So how can I rename 2? I can rename it as 20 tenths. So now I have 11 tenths is equal to 20 tenths minus y. Well, I want both sides to say 11 tenths. So if I have 20 tenths, what can I subtract from 20 tenths that's going to give me 11 tenths? 20 tenths minus 9 tenths. If I subtract 9 tenths from 20 tenths, it gives me 11 tenths. So each side would be equal. So when looking at this, y would equal 9 tenths if I plug that in. Now, if I went back to the original problem, I have a half plus 6 tenths equals 2 minus y. y would actually equal nine tenths in that problem. So there's a lot, there's a few more steps in these types of problems in here um, as I threw a little bit of a challenge at you. But again, it's important to remember to rename your fractions with common denominators. It's gonna make your guys' lives a lot easier when trying to solve these types uh, of problems up here. Thank you for tuning in to Miss Landers Math Extravaganza. As always, we'll see you next time.